like Daisy was saying, every day we hear from different people that are shut out of the uh, decisions that impact us. So um, just actually yesterday, someone signed the petition for PIP. And I'm going to read what, what she said, right? So she said, I'm, I'm working, but my utilities have been shut off since August 2017. They want over $2,000 to turn electricity back on and $400 for gas. Even though I'm working, I'm unable to save for the down payments. So I'm paying $10 a day for gas for a generator to, to have some lights on. I'm using a cooler to keep some cool things to drink. I usually heat up water to wash or to wash my hair also in cold water. How many people think that in the world most rich country, this should be happening, right? Whoa! Somebody right here in Rhode Island with over a year, no gas and electricity, right? This is a disgrace. And as Daisy was mentioning, we were here last year appealing to National Grid to change their uh, position on the percentage income payment plan, but to no avail. So we're here again, you know, $60,000 have come out of our pockets and been funneled to water fire, which we want people to enjoy water fire, but we don't want to be paying for publicity that is based on lies. So the George Wiley Center had some youth, mostly youth of color, who are artists that came to our center to, to talk about corporate propaganda. And they saw right through the lies pretty quick, right? because they talked about what it felt like to be shut off, right? To the embarrassment, the shame that Daisy was talking about, how it feels to be shut off. And when you look, uh, Google National Grid, it's all pictures of happy, smiling families, right? And we're here to break through that facade, to break through that lie, to show them that we're united. You know, there's an old saying in the labor movement that sometimes the boss does the organizing for you. We have climate justice activists here that are fed up with their in, in accountability and how they don't care about the earth. We have steel workers here that have been locked out. We have low income consumers that have been shut off. And we're here to say enough is enough. And we're going to build our movement stronger until we have a more ecological, a more just, and a better worker conditions. And we're going to stay strong. We're not going to allow for the old divide and conquer to happen. Where they try to pit us against each other and for their own benefit, right? Every day when someone's shut off, who pays for it? It's us, right? When someone's pushed into a nursing home because their utilities are being shut off, or when their kids are put in foster care, we're paying that for that, right? And we're fed up with it. We're fed up with paying for the consequences of National Grid's irresponsibility. Their CEOs in the UK are not paying those bills. And our elected officials are not responding to us when they allow for us to subsidize these, these harmful practices, right? Yes. So we're gonna join together. Like Daisy said, we're gonna, we're gonna march together. We're gonna take the streets. And we're gonna start by joining our voices together and make sure our uh, Union brothers and sisters and siblings with local 12003 know that we're going to back them up. So if folks can open up their calendars and look to see if you're available next Wednesday at noon, there's going to be a rally to support the steel workers up in Boston. And anyone that can go, we got to make sure that workers that are on the front line of environmental justice, on the front line of climate justice, right? They're the ones that are facing the health impacts of dealing with fossil fuels that are keeping us safe from explosives, explosions based on fossil fuels, right? So we're not going to allow them to, to divide us, right? How many people were at the WTO in Seattle, right? Maybe there are a couple people. What brought people together were the Teamsters and the Turtles. This is a little glimmer of hope here in Rhode Island that we can talk to each other, environmentalists, climate justice activists, low-income folks, and we can come together. So when I ask you 
What do we do when workers are under attack? What do you say? What do we do when communities are under attack? What do we do when the earth is under attack? Stand up, fight back!